he's like looking for, I would say, quote, this is use the term loosely, right? Like, quote unquote, a Tarmogoyf style card in standard. Something that costs two or three that sits around and just gets better while you kill things. So his opponent, Max Teets, uh, former Invitational winner himself, he is playing the Green Black Dredge deck. Now, this is a deck we saw a lot of for a couple months, basically when Temple of Malady got released. Haven't seen a lot of it since. The base of the deck is uh, Seder Way Wayfinder, Commune with the Gods, and Grizzly Salvage. That's your base for filling up your graveyards. Your uh, payouts from there, a couple copies of Whip of Erebos, uh, Gerard, Night Howler, and so forth. So yeah. it can play a conventional, you know, I just kind of cast my stuff, and uh, some of it's going to be big and pretty powerful, but uh, it does also allow for games where it does some powerful graveyard stuff, cards like Night Howler, Nemesis Immortals, uh, facilitated by all the self-milling effects. I actually played on stream a, a fair amount of Green Black Dredge. Uh, that was what I was playing on Moto for about a month after its release there. The deck is pretty powerful. It does have some holes. One that's going to have here is that Hoagland has four scavenging ooze after board. And the oh. deck doesn't really have a way to, its way to deal with that is Shadowborn Demon, which is not a great way to deal with it. There are a couple copies of Ultimate Price and Abrupt Decay and Max's sideboard if we brought him in, so uh, he's not just dead to a scavenging ooze, but you are right, that is a very problematic card for Max yeah. in the matchup. But that said, like a Jun deck that's on that's on this like removal Tarmogoyfy plan, like Dredge should be excellent against it. Yeah. You know, so, so it's a lot of the same stuff, but the graveyard deck has so much more powerful synergies, and a Jun list is likely to give you the time to allow that to develop. The graveyard deck's not playing fair as far as drawing cards is concerned. So we see a turn two carry hit from Max, and he go he's going to get thought seized on turn two by Jeff. He has a third land, an ultimate price, a Night Howler, and a Nyx Weaver right now. Nyx Weaver, one of the mill engines of the deck. It's kind of this hybrid card where it's not a straight mill card and it's not a straight threat. It mills you a little bit and then eventually finds you a threat. It is not much of a threat. No, it's well, it's interesting because you know, like I oftentimes think of the deck as like big hits or end enablers, and this guy's like a little bit of both. And a two-three reach creature lines up kind of nicely against Blue Devotion. Yeah, they have a lot of some bonus there. Two-three flyers and and so forth. So it does do some work in that matchup. There's a couple matchups actually against like mono black aggro. Okay, not he's a two-three, which is pretty big. He has reach, which is good, and he's a black creature, which isn't shabby. Yeah, you so, can't like, doom blade it. You can't ultimate price it. And swinging through, it's not trivial. Yeah. So, like, he's actually good again. He happens to be good in a couple matchups, in addition to being a graveyard creature. And he's the card that Jeff is going to take. I mean, playing aggressive decks, I've definitely just lost games to Nightvale Spectre being a 2 3. Right. So, I mean, that, that, that's, those stats line up very nicely against a variety of Sander decks right now. All right, Sander Wayfinder is the, the draw and the play for Max. And that's our commune with the gods. So, he's going to get to keep one of these. Commune with the gods can keep. Creature or enchantment, so he's gonna have the option between Lifebane Zombie and Seder Wayfinder. Lifebane Zombie is a threat, which would be pretty good here. Right now, the only threat he has is a Night Howler. That said, Seder Wayfinder would make that Night Howler in his hand real sweet. So the question I'd be wondering of him is, you know, how much more removal do I expect Jeff to have? The fact that, you know, Max also, you know, Jeff had an opportunity to take a removal spell out of Max's hand last turn, elected not to. It's not clear what that Lifebane Zombie is worth. Right. I, I like the way Max plays this. I would expect Jeff to continue killing my things, so I, I would just want more threats. Yeah. Jeff plays Stomping Ground there and Goblin Rabble Master. This is some, definitely a new shell for Rabble Master. It's going to get ultimate priced as well. Yeah, Jeff's deck with all this removal, just kind of looking for an individually impactful thing, as you mentioned. And now we get to look at Jeff's hand. He has two more lands, second Rabble Master, Ultimate Price, and Golgari Charm. So Jeff leaving the Night Howler for Max because he can charm it. He can Ultimate Price a creature as well, for maybe that Life Bane Zombie. So right now it looks like kind of both players have each other covered. The rarely seen Rabble Master Golgari Charm deck. <laughs> Using that with a bit of a smirk. <laughs> It's interesting. This I like, I like the role he's trying out Rabble Master in. It's fairly innovative, I think, for the card. He's not just trying to kill someone straight away, which no. is where we've seen Rabble Master so far yeah. in decks. He's trying to sit around with a bunch of kill spells and just make some value. And there we go. Creature Rabble Master's plate makes a token, swings its open, swings itself into Sylvan Caryatid, and just gotta be pretty happy with that. Anytime you can swing a token and not have it die. Rebel Master starts to look pretty good. 
and a lot of what you were describing about the philosophy of Jeff's deck looks like it may manifest this game. Right, he's just going to sit here and kill. Right now, like, this is what Jeff wants to do, right? He's, he's going to sit here and kill Max's things for a while and make some goblins. Night Howler is the play for Max. He's going to swing. Remember, that counts both graveyards, so it's three from, this, from the zombie, one more from Ravel Master, one from Nyx Weaver, and one from Seder Wayfinder. That's going to be a total of six. Though, again, Jeff can clean this up incidentally. Yeah, he does have the gold guard charm. Jeff's, and an ultimate price as well. Yeah. Jeff's taking some damage from his own lands here. So he actually is down to 10. He has to be a little concerned, but this Ravel Master is, is working. Look, it's swinging for six right now, or for five after the blocks. Jeff traditionally takes a lot of damage off of his own lands. This is not new territory for him. No. All right, Max with the drop of turn. He's got to know that this, this Life Bane zombie attack is certainly not working. It'll meet it. It'll get ultimate priced. Jeff does not leave up Golgari Charm mana, so. Well, he doesn't have access to a second black mana, so he has to choose one or the other. Oh, okay, the one under the Temple of Malice is another red green. Yeah. Okay, just single black. And one of the two Nemesis of Mortals now cast for Max. Remember, because he has three creatures in the yard, that Nemesis only costs three. It's a 5-5 five five that now for six mana instead of nine will monster into a 10-10. And Jeff just used his ultimate price as well, so not clear he can answer this straight away. Yeah, he can. Right now, so Max with just, just huge creatures in play. In between Night Howler, fairly sizable right now as well. And the danger with the Rattle Master plan is it looks like all those hard, those goblins that Jeff worked really hard for may all just decide to off themselves this turn. Golgari well, Charm most likely will take care of the Night Howler. From there, Jeff may have to leave the Rattle Master itself on defense, and he is facing lethal potentially next turn. Yeah, he is drawn. He does does have a hero's downfall in hand. Now remember, he still has his problem where he's only on single black, so it's not a card yet. But if he can buy himself some time, he does play a fair number of black sources. Remember, he also does have Sylvan Karyatids, so it's and Xenagos. So another black mana is not too far off. No, Xenagos can't make black. He just makes red green. So yeah, he needs to get one of his black sources. Jeff looks like he's executing his game plan here. It's just, will he get kind of randomly overpowered? Now, uh, something keep, to keep in mind here, if Jeff ends up chump blocking with the Rabble Master, then the must attack clause is taking off the tokens, and he has a lot of time to find a second black mana. I think he's going to swing the Rabble. He might swing. There's a small more I thought he might swing the Rabble Master. It is a five on the attack. I don't think any of Max's guys are actually bigger than five. But it's just the goblin swinging. Max is going to block all of them. And take zero. Jeff's hurt a little bit by his own mana right now. And he does have the Xenago, so he's going to have chump blockers for a while. And he can hold up. The one thing is you can hold up Nemesis of Mortals that way. A lot of these synergistic graveyard cards aren't particularly powerful in their own rights. You know, Nemesis Immortals is just big, and so is Night Howler. Yeah, no trample, no evasion. It's just a big just thing. Just big. You can chump him. There is a danger, and this is a pretty real one. Max does play two Whip of Erebos in his deck, and that's where this, that's like the ultimate late game for this Black Green Dredge deck, because they, they get a whip in play, and then just these guys become nightmares. Yeah, Jeff can chump block for as long as he wants to, but he's not going to be able to pull up in the damage race. No, and, and Max always has great stuff to whip back, too. It's certainly one of the better whip decks. It's a little slow, it's a little cumbersome, but once it gets online, this deck can really maximize it. I think the deck fell off a bit, especially when Blue-White moved to Planar Cleansing. That was pretty rough for this deck. You know, Azorius Charm was already a very good card against what you were doing. But Night Howler, the fact that you had all these bestow things in Night Howler and Herald of Torment gave you some leeway to maybe play around that kind of stuff. But having played a bunch with both blue, white, and green, black, I, I know the planar cleansing was not good for this deck. Yeah. Let's see what the draw is this turn. 
It is another Night Howler. He's just going to bestow Night Howler on Night Howler. And swing the whole thing at Zenigo, so it'll just get jumped. And passes back. Now, remember, there is a combo finish available to the black-green deck. If he can mill himself, and this is this is pretty big, because it, and the reason probably why Max put Night Howler on Night Howler is that if he draws Jared, he can cast Jared and sack one of these creatures to instantly 10 Jeff. And Nemesis can become a 10 on its own, but Night Howler would need some help. That is a huge draw for Jeff this turn. Well, yeah, this is the card that just shuts down the dredge deck. He drew Scavenging Ooze, and the card's a nightmare for dredge. He's going to remove immediately remove all the creatures from graveyards, kill and kill Max's Night Howlers. There's a little bit of rules here. Um, the Night Howler that's a creature hits the yard, and then the aura comes down, but now it's a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it is. When state-based effects are checked, I, one, I believe one Night Howler, like both state-based effects are checked at the same time, and he should have a 1-1 one, one Night Howler left in play. Yeah, they, they don't go to the graveyard at the same time. This is the kind of thing where I would call a judge, just to be sure. But my my hunch, as a as a level zero judge, but someone who plays some magic, is that he I, I believe Max has a one one. I, I agree with you, though. Uh, for whatever it's worth, I have learned not to be too presumptuous about bestow cards. <laughs> yeah, they're. Yeah, I definitely agree. So right now, I believe we're going to get a judge ruling on this one. Remember, these matches do have a table judge for them. We'll let you know when we get that one. I'm not going to. Yeah, I think Jeff Jeff was about to assume that he should call a judge there and then thought better of it because it just doesn't work the way that he wants it to. All right. Well, one thing Jeff can do is plus the Zenigos to make green mana, eat the Night Howler that's in the yard, then when the other one dies, and let eat that one too. And that's what Jeff's going to go ahead and do. So five creatures eaten this turn means Jeff's up to six. Jeff's six creatures eat, or five creatures eaten means he's up to 16 and has a Scavenging Ooze in play. And these things have gotten a lot tougher for Max. He can't monster the soul either, or the, the Nemesis either. This isn't, OK. A play here for Max, though. This is out of the board. It's a one of Soul of Innistrad. Now, Soul of Innistrad has definitely gotten a lot worse in the face of the scavenging use. This a turn earlier, or two turns earlier, could have made a huge impact. I uh, lost to this uh, Acre Empress Sydney. It's also a combo with Ornithopter. Just block all day long. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. OK, Soul of Innistrad is a 6-6 death touch that for five mana raised deads three creatures. One of the part of the soul cycle from M15, a cycle we really haven't seen too much of in Constructed. But if Max had a graveyard, this would be really powerful right now. But even I mean, though even a six six death toucher is not shabby in this spot. No, not at all. It trades with, it stops the ooze from beating him up. But another rabble master from Jeff means that the token armies are gonna advance. Jeff has every turn he's gonna make two goblins and possibly a satyr. This could add up to be a lot of creatures. Man, Rabble Master unchecked is able to hang with a lot of six and seven mana creatures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max can kill two of them a turn, but that's fine. And then this is like one of the weaknesses of the dredge deck is just the card scavenging ooze. Um, you have to kill it. It beats your entire deck by itself. And I'm curious to see if, if Jeff is going to go ahead and just use this Golgari charm to regenerate. And I like this play. There's not really that many enchantments he has to worry about from this stage. And the Rabble Master is more valuable than killing basically anything Max can bring to the table at this point. And we see ne Nemesis Immortals hits the bin there as well. Nemesis, I believe, was trying to block a Rabble, was blocking a Rabble Master, or trying to trade with one. Yeah. It's a good use of Golgari Charm. Yeah, well, especially because it saves a Rabble Master. It's and now Max down to one creature here, or two creatures, a Sylvan character in the soul. Jeff's going to make three tokens a turn. And even if he kills the ooze, even if he draws the ultimate price for the ooze now, I'm not sure this is enough. Right, and, and Jeff's generating so much power that even something like Whip of Erebos doesn't really care about. Like, go ahead and attack me and gain six. Who, who even cares? Jeff's plan right now outscales Whip of Erebos. You know, if Max gets a whip and Jeff gets to do what he's doing, Jeff will continue to pull farther ahead. 
and Hoagland actually was so he had to, he had two buys here. He was talking to him. He's pretty excited about this deck today, um, and we'll see. I mean, obviously putting up a very good record with it. This is impressive to watch. I mean, in my opinion, Jeff decks have a lot, a pretty wide hit fail rate. Yes. This looks like one of the better ones. Well, I mean, this is pretty much true of anybody. Like, you know, when you brew, you have to be okay with, like, most of your decks are bad if you're just always brewing. Like, yeah. that's just part of the deal. And I think, and a lot of times, like, they can be pretty untuned too, right? But the one thing that Jeff's doing here is he's saying, like, like he's doing something different with Rabble Master. And I, I think a lot of people have tried to play this Jun midrange style strategy, and maybe this is the way to do it. So a Herald of Torment bestowed on a soul of Innistrad, and no attacks. That is much worse than a Rabble Master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, six and a half minutes remain in the round. Some doubt that the players will need it, though. Jeff's armies continue to grow every turn here. It's not too long before Jeff just has a lethal swing. Uh, if it's not this turn, it's next, right? I mean, <laughs> so it's, I mean, those rabble masters are going to be like between rabble master and two rabble masters and an ooze. Max will only be able to block two of them, and the unblocked one is going to be dealing eight upwards of eight damage. I, I think the only question here is, is Jeff willing to just run the scavenging ooze in to this 9-9. Is yeah. that block something he's willing to accept? I believe it is lethal this turn. Jeff, the token armies assemble. <laughs> Jeff shows he had two more heroes downfalls. <laughs> and, but <laughs> the, ooze, the ooze draw was enough to get there rather than getting the second black. And Jeff Hoagland at 7-1, and one, making a strong move into day two. Pretty much the ideal Jeff win there, winning with a weird mixture of cards.